What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Metro Jiu-Jitsu's podcast. I'm Coach David here with Professor Mohammed. Good morning, everybody. What's going on, guys? So we are we got some questions. I should have introduced you as John Donaher. I saw. I, I regret not doing Let it. Let me pull my sleeve. Uh, yeah, now you <laughs> I, <do> I, re- <laughs> <laughs> I regret not doing that. That's that's okay though. You got your jujitsu rash guard. What's that? Did you, did you train? You train this morning? Uh, I'm training this morning. Yeah. Oh, okay. Right Doing on. a little bit of drilling. Oh, sweet. What type of drilling? Uh, jujitsu drilling. He's talking jiu-jitsu about jujitsu drilling. Yeah. Uh, we're working on some position specific for one of our athletes that are getting ready to go to worlds. All right, on. So yeah, uh, just uh, they wanted some extra training and gonna help them out. Who is it? Uh, Coach is Mia. All right, on. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. Are they excited? They prep the world tournament. That's what December uh, or November. That's no, this that's, month. Uh, Worlds is December. Okay. Yeah. All right. I believe I got nervous. We got so many tournaments. That there's a work. lot. There's a lot coming up. Yeah. Yeah. Jujitsu. We have one this weekend. We have one next month. We have. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. So it yeah. seems like we're always uh, traveling, competing, learning. You know what I've noticed? I and I'm definitely like for my competition. I really want to go to the ones like where I can get the most matches. And I was talking with actually the last tournament I went to, um, I got, I think I had six matches mm-hmm. and, uh, cause, uh, we, I was in four different brackets, fought a lot of the same guys, but they, the, I saw some of the coaches having a conversation with like the wrestlers. They're like, man, I would love for jujitsu to become as mainstream as wrestling. It's wrestling. Like I, you, you, it's in high school. It's offered at high school, yeah. subsidized by the state. You go to a, you go to a wrestling meet. You're going to get 15, 12 to fifteen matches. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, and I'm and, and I'm that's like, really where the experience. Comes yeah, in I'm like, matches. man, like, like that would be like if you if you you tell someone like, hey, how the tournament go? I had twelve matches. They're like, bro, how many people were in your bracket? A hundred? Like all the same weight divisions. Yeah, so if they're having yeah. twelve matches. It's all their own weight division. I, I I guess I'm not exactly sure how wrestling works, but. But that I think would be a, uh, I think that's a big one. I think that's a big one. Um, so we got some questions, yeah. and uh, we're gonna go ahead and get right into these. Uh, Tyler, one of our members, uh, says, "What advice?" That's a deep question for the first one. What advice would you have for someone looking to start their own small business? Professor, you've been doing this longer than I have. I'll let you answer, and then I'll give my answer. Uh, advice starting your own business. Um, gosh, where do I start? <laughs> where do we start with that one? You know, there's there's lots of schools of thought. One of them is do what you enjoy. Another one is do what you're good at, you know. Um, but uh, in order to be successful at a small business, you really have to grow personally. And I think jujitsu is definitely a tool that can help you grow personally because you're gonna have to learn to deal with uh, challenges, with resistance, things not going your way. You know, those days of driving down the street and saying, this is a good location for this business. Yeah. Let's open up something here because it's a good location. Yeah. I think those days are like way, way gone. Really good. I mean, outside maybe some restaurants, right? But like even um, even then, I mean, people buy people, they don't buy products. Yeah. Yeah. They uh what's that rest dude? There's this restaurant. Not to get off topic. It's like down by like the Rouge plant, not the Rouge plant, but like off Fort Street is a Sibley Gardens. It's literally like it's just commercial uh it's no man's land around it but it's a restaurant that everybody knows and from what i understand it's kind of expensive but it's like it's just the location sucked but they have a really good obviously product and service so continue i interrupted but that's that's a huge point yeah so um you know people buy people they don't buy product and like the information that i have paid for uh for uh business training business seminars uh, literally hundreds of thousands of dollars yeah. over the yeah. last 15, 20 years, um, have, you can get so much of that free now. Yeah. Yeah. You can it, get, it'll be chopped up, but you can get, there's so much information on there. And, uh, so yeah, that no, good. 
I like I have to I always have to like curb, you know, because I try to follow the 80, 20, 80 20 rule of how much I talk. Well, I guess the podcast, I got to talk a certain amount, but but the now I think the knowledge is certain base. You absolutely like take notes, write this down. You you have to absolutely love it. You have to. Yeah. Like you have to love it. And here's why. Because don't expect to make money within your first year. Don't expect to take any money out of that business in your first year. If you do, then you're in the extreme minority. Okay, when we opened up, we were open up for, I, I worked for Metro for over a year before I, I think we took any money out of it. Like before I actually like, so however many hours, so when someone's like, you know, $15 an hour, they, there's, they're like, they should have a reality show where the boss has to live off the, the lowest paid worker's wage. And the business owner, one of the guys shared it, he's like, let's flip the script. We should have the lowest paid person work as long as the business owner did without any money coming in to start that business. Yeah. That's, and so those are two good arguments. Yeah. So you've got, um, so you have to love it. Number one, don't expect to make any money again, not saying you won't, I'm not saying you absolutely won't, but don't expect to. And, and the longer that you can nurture, it's like a plan. The longer that you can take, cause you're going to make profit within your first year. If I would hope if you're, have some good mentors and you're doing things right. But that shit, if you can put, put that right back into that business for the first year, that's going to definitely set you off on a good foot. Um, definitely have some, some, some money, um, stack your money to where you, I, I'm not a fan at all of like taking out a huge, like, you know, new business line and go and get into debt so you can start a business because <clears throat> yeah. statistically half of them fail within the first three years, yeah. half of them. So if you take out all every year after that, yeah, the likelihood and chances and statistics of small businesses failing, including big businesses, yeah. goes up every single year. Yeah, you know, one of the uh, one of the seminars that I went to talked about business, and they talked about business and the psychology of business, and it's really like um, athletics and performance. Yep. So uh, competitors also know this that um, you know not, over ninety percent of uh, competing and success and competing and anything that you do is uh, psychological. 100%. Over 90% of it. So um, the mechanics are such a small amount. Yep. The mechanics of specifically like the operations and things like yeah. that. And your psychology and how you approach the business definitely drives that. So yep. um, the, the I would also say get yourself an outline. Like um, uh, get yourself a business outline and get yourself a very conservative, conservative financial forecast of yep. what you can expect to, yep. uh, what you would like your business to make, like not a wish list. There's a difference. Yeah. It's not a wish list, a very, very conservative uh, forecast. And I've even went as far as to say, okay, you know what? I really enjoy this. If I'm gonna do this for the rest of my life, kind of have to work for free kind of set those numbers in. Like, what do I need just to maybe just to pay my bills? Yeah. Just to pay my bills and give me like a 10 or $15 an hour and um, uh, yeah, get those numbers and get an outline in place before you start. Yeah. You should, you should definitely know, you should definitely know what your, your, your personal budget, your monthly cost of living, whatever that is. Like you should know what that is to be like, all right. So, and then there's, so there's this, and, and I would also say, you know, there's two, there's two, there's two minds of thought, right? If I was, and I'll just be fully transparent. If I was single and childless, I probably would have opened Metro much sooner. I, I would have, because like, I'll, I'll go live in the hood for $300 a month and like, I'll, or I'll sleep in the gym and do it, you know, do it uh, pedagogy style. Like I'll, I'll do whatever I have to do, but I had a wife and kids. And so like, so I was working my continual, like my day job, saving as much money as I could still working at Metro like, and before I could make the leap. And, and I, there was like this sort of like, like when I made the leap to quit my full-time job and work for Metro full-time, I, I, I still took a pay cut, but the energy then that from that 40 or 50 hours a week that I was working my full-time job went in the Metro and it quickly, I think within the first month, it, it made up the difference. So, so with your clients and the elite husband courses that you teach, you help uh, business owners and people yeah. that like are established or are maybe over 20 or over 30 years old. Mm -hmm. So your clients that you work with that 
um, have the kids like you do, yeah. but are like, you know what, for whatever reason, I do want to take that leap and I do want to, yeah. um, I, I feel like it's the right time for me, but they have the kids, they have the wife, they have the mortgage. How do you advise uh, your clients that you work with an elite husband like that? Well, I want to take a risk, but maybe not too much of a risk, but I need to take a risk. And yeah. Know. Yeah. It's a calculated one. It's a calculated risk. Like, cause you got, you like, if you have the drive and it's something for you, like it's like, it's a calculated risk. If you're like, Hey, I've got $0 and I've just got this really good idea. And so I want to go get a business loan and run out this space. Um, and, and, and hire a few people. And I want to do all this cause I got a really good gut feeling that I can make it. I'm going to heavily advise against that because, because like one social media now you could start selling like, I, like make, make it up. Uh, if we were like, let's say we wanted to open up a second location. I could probably enroll 50 people without signing a lease without doing any Facebook ads or Google ads with, I could do it all with organic social media organic social media. So, so I would leverage that before you do anything else. Right. So, and, and so like, depending what the business is, like do it, if you do it organically first, start small, be like, Hey guys, I'm starting, go out and get a social media, get a freaking Facebook. Well, don't get a Facebook page. That's for Facebook ads, but like they get a group, get an Instagram, say, Hey guys, here's what I do. I now I embroider polos and I'm doing my, starting my own embroidery polo. Hey, listen, um, I'm going to, here's how I differ from the big box guys. Here's how I can serve you. Uh, go out, get tested. Like you can do all that organically. So, yeah. so that, that leap of faith, like I, because man, like the stress, even let's say the, the, the effort that it's going to take if you're not fully prepared, like, and, and things aren't set up, right. It's going to take everything you have all of your time. And so then that's going to affect your life score, which is another <laughs> question. Now, even if it's, it, it takes blood, sweat and tears and work and all that time to, to make the marriage, we're like, yes. All right, man, overcome. Sweet. Great. Your marriage is making money now or your, your business making money now. Meanwhile, your wife's over here filing papers, you know, and I've seen, I've seen that like that's cliche, but I've seen that I, just, most of the times, like most of the times it's like, it's not, Hey, I want to start a business what does my wife think about it? It's, Hey, I've got a good business, but my marriage sucks like that. Like that's, that's, that's the thing. Right. And so it, it's, it's that balance, but, um, those, those are key things. And then fi- talk to somebody. I, I would say ultimately find somebody who has in, is it in the field of what you want to do is successful and be like, Hey, will you be my mentor? Like, like, like I'm not even, I'm not even joking. I'm kind of being sarcastic here, but find someone who does what you want to do and, duplicate that and you know what duplicate like, it's that simple so really. i'm reading think and grow rich again and in think and grow rich love that book i'm, I'm going through it for the yeah, first time yeah yeah I, i'm I, I will be rereading it though you know, it's 100 years old bro every time i hear anything about that book every time gangster the, gangster but the, read that book read that book actually think and grow rich yeah. the mentors because i have mem- mentors too you know what they'll say well, how many times have you read it? Can you name off the 12, uh, the 12, uh, of rule, 12 laws. Laws. Yeah. yeah. Can you do it? So it's a good reminder that, um, that's gangster. My favorite dude, my, not to nerd out. Like when in the capital chapter, the capitalism chapter, yeah. if you're not capitalist, I'm sorry, it's probably some podcast or the country for you, but like they, uh, so capitalist the, means you're not <laughs> mad at Amazon. Is that right? I'm not, I'm not mad at Amazon, okay. honestly. Like, like, and he points out like, and this was written in the twenties. He's like, here's the cost of a breakfast in New York city in the twenties. And he goes through, like, if you were to do this on your own without capitalism, it, it would cost. Thank you, coach Christian. It would, um, uh, it would cost this much for the Canadian bacon, this much for the Chinese tea, this, uh, you're millions of dollars to get you all the things that capitalism brought you in that, in that diverse, it's like that pencil book, you know, if the cost to make a pencil without capitalism, it wouldn't be, uh, it wouldn't be possible because the leads from one area, the woods from another, the rubber for the erasers and other, the seals. From that. So yeah, that's a gangster book. I love that book. So, um, yeah, uh, that's some good advice. Get yourself a, a, a mentor or somebody to, uh, um, you know, to that you could kind of follow if they had success. Another one is, um, uh, don't be afraid to look stupid. 
don't be afraid to make mistakes. Absolutely. 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 I've spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on actual material and training, but I've lost more than hundreds of thousands of dollars on mistakes that I've made in business. Yeah, of and, course. And the mistakes that I've lost that stingy, stung me have been lessons that I've actually, so if I lost 10 or 20,000 on a business or a project or a, a period of my business, yep. the learning lesson cost me, that's a course. That's a course. It's the the course that I lost money in was actually cost me like ten thousand. If yeah. I lost something on, say, uh, it's an expensive college course, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you know what? You don't forget them. Yeah, you remember it, right? Yeah. You know, I I um uh I have a family member. He got. He's actually a uh, he's a he's law enforcement now. Okay. But he's I believe he's got like a bachelor's in business. Okay. Finished business school. I was like, sweet man. And mind you, I I've been doing business like owning my own business for a minute working for myself, I should say. And um, I was like, what, so what'd you learn? He's like, I didn't learn anything four years in, you know? So, and I don't know, I don't know how much the tuition costs, but, uh, but yeah, that's, that's, it's, that's heavily important to be like, Hey, I tried this. I like, here's what I learned. I failed at it, but those are the ones you remember, right? Yo, do you remember when we had female kickboxing in here? Yeah, somebody asked me about that a couple of days yeah, ago. Yeah, I, I, I can't foresee an, a situation in which that would come back. That was that was like a – for us, that was a failure because you know what I've never done? What? Kickboxing. Like ever, <laughs> ever. So I don't know why I was like, yeah, let's get kickboxing in here. Yeah, but you, like, you know what? Like, you, you try it. You know what I mean? I'm not going to say no to it. But yeah, I mean that was a learned lesson. I get that it. That was man. definitely a learned yeah. lesson, and we paid for the lesson. <laughs> oh, my gosh. But would – would I say that I'm was never going to have striking MMA or uh, kickboxing in my programs? No, I won't say that. Well, it's just female kick. I, it, no, no, it, strike boxing, MMA. Okay, like, like you know, I've at least got somewhat of an interest in MMA, but female kickboxing was like every way we did that was wrong. Every yeah. every way that was a, that was a lesson learned. You know, you know, something else I'll add. We can we, publicly laugh about it now. Before but. we move on, is we actually were working with somebody, and one yep. of the mistakes. And the lessons that we learned is who you work with, who you partner with, um, yep. who you uh, decide to align yourself with, who you let represent your name and things like that. That's and, huge. That's and that was one of the learning lessons. And that it was, was the biggest one, I think, was the, was the, was the damage to the, to the Metro name. Yeah. Honestly. Like, honestly. And you know what? And I wouldn't say it was damaged because we've actually had the female kickboxers have left, came back with their kids or came back to enroll. So, yeah. um, Well, it's because we – spend a lot of money to make it right yeah 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 so so yeah so there's lessons uh you know don't be afraid to look stupid on social media or uh learn lessons and take chances you take will risks. only be talked down to by those doing less than you you will only be made fun of by those doing less than you so if like so like if you're like you there's two types of people who who watch what we just said and they're like yeah see those idiots they lost money and they're so, the one they're the ones not doing anything. So, you know, um, man, we could talk about business forever. But I have a, I had a friend of mine who, I called, this who called me the other day and he's like, uh, he's like, coach, um, you know what? You're the only one I can talk to about this. And I'm like, what's up, man? And he's like, you know what? I made like uh, like fifty thousand dollars in crypto. Fifty. He made fifty grand in crypto and oh. he. Um, he wasn't sure on whether he should like uh, put the money into his house, invest it, wow. cash it out, or let it sit in for a minute. And um, Yo. that conversation, I love having those conversations. Yeah. And um, so you have to be able to have a conversation that if you ask somebody that question, that'd be like, whoa, yeah. like $50,000. Like you got, you can rich. retire. You hit the you lottery. Can retire. Exactly. Yeah. You never you have can, to work again. You can retire. And it doesn't matter. Like if you live in the, the, the lowest portion of Detroit or the most expensive uh, zip code in Michigan, like $50,000 is not going to help anybody live for more than a couple, maybe a year. Yeah. Maybe yeah. like, you know, so it's not a lot of money and you have to have somebody with, that has a psychology that says 50 grand, um, okay, you know, this is what I do. You know, let's take a look at what you did or didn't do. But ultimately, my friend decided on his own what the right thing to do. But he had me to call up and talk to about those this. people are important. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, those people are important for sure. Um, Next question. So as then not to turn this into a, a business podcast, I could totally do a business podcast. Um, what's the next question? 
All right, here we go. No, I can't see if there's any questions. Well, I, I think I? you got to click. So, so that's they're gonna be. Oh well, there were there are no. If that's that one. There's none on yours. While you're okay. pulling that up, um, when you take time out, Jamie actually asked me this. One of our members. So I got back from uh, from vacation last week, and uh, and I was I was joking. I was like, "Yo, my body felt great. I'm not gonna lie. Like I was still working out, but like it felt good." <laughs> And, and he's like, when you take time off, is it possible to come back improved? Like, do you notice, like, is it like, do you just kind of forget everything and you come back kind of with a fresh start? And it was like only like six days or something. Yeah. And uh, he's like, or do you, he's like, does the time off kind of help with your mental clarity coming back? And I gave him my answer. I'd be actually be curious to hear your answer too. Yeah. I said, for me, for me, it is, um, it doesn't really affect it doesn't really affect my jujitsu technique to take a week off if I don't train because I'm still mentally think it's still front of mind. I still mentally drill things like that. And that was a, that was a huge thing, uh, mental drilling. And so um, so that is, you know, some, like I said, so long as you're the type to where your seven days won't turn into 70 days. So long as your seven days off won't turn into two months because two months, like it's not going to fly for two months. I'm not, I'm not going to be like, I'm not going to be like, yo, two months, no problem. I'm just as good. No, that's not how it works. But seven days, you know, you let maybe let your, your body or whatever heal up a little bit. Um, you're, you're still have your positions and your game and what you want to work on front of mind. Like that's, that's really important. And, uh, and he referenced a book by Jocko um, called the dichotomy of leadership, I think. And it was like, it was the he was talking about uh, separated but attached, separated but attached, and I, that book's actually going to go on my list too. But it, he was saying it, sometimes when you're in the trenches, it's hard to see like what's around you. If you're just if you're grinding out, whether in, in work or business or uh, or jujitsu or or whatever, it's hard to kind of get the bigger picture. But then if you back too far away, then you're just you're de- you're detached, right? So. Um, so he's like, you want to be, you, it's important to kind of zoom out and get the big picture. And I have a personal application to, to attach to that. But the question for that, so that's my answer. Your answer is when you take time off, let's say you go somewhere for it. I, I, you're not the type to do this though. Like you probably would have trained somewhere, but, um, you, let's say you take a week or two off and you come back. Are you, do you feel like you've just, you're so far behind because you took that two weeks off? Do you feel like it was almost like a refresher that's going to able, uh, enable you to come back um, better? Um, well, <clears throat> there's two types of people when starting a fitness program. I want to keep training or I'm going to keep training. So, yeah. again, we're talking about the psychology of what yeah. an athlete, how an athlete approaches uh, their fitness and their commitment to their fitness journey. And if I want to keep training, you know, that doesn't tell me that that, that guy or girl is going to be training for a while. And I think the important thing is, is just to yeah. maintain <clears throat> consistency. Time off isn't that good. And we're only talking about like two or three days a week. Okay. Right. So like the right. hobbyist, the person, yeah. family person, I think. And that's the are- average, by the way. If you're like, if you're like, oh, I can only make it two days a week. That's great. Because if you come two days a week for a year, you're in that extreme minority. Right. So if you know and 10 years, I mean. and you're going to keep training, there's a difference, you know, and your gut really, there's a little voice. It's called little voice syndrome. Yeah. It's, yep. Little voice syndrome. <laughs> yeah. That's from, that's from the event this past year. Yeah. Weekend. There's a little yeah. voice in there that is telling you the truth. And sometimes the truth feels good and sometimes it doesn't. But, you know, when you take some time off, I think time off is good. All right. I think time off is very, very good. It gives your body and your mind a chance to kind of recalibrate for when you come back. So um, time off is good, but you have to keep keep in track. If you have a job, if you have a career and you only do that job for two days a week for five, 10 or 20 or 30 years, number one, you're never going to get a pension. You can't get a pension on two days a week. You're not just not going to build up enough uh, uh, money uh, to get some residual, you're not going to build up a retirement off two days a week. So you've got to keep that in mind. If you really want to get paid from your efforts in jujitsu, you got to get yourself up to a couple, uh, three days a week. And after the three days a week, um, how, uh, a couple days, uh, if you have to take some time off here and there, I think it's good. And if you ever decide, like, I think Jamie has competed before, yeah. you know, one tournament is an experience of like 
three months of training. Tourn- tournaments are tournaments are important, man. Yeah. And and uh, and bottom line, I mean, to, you know, it's unfortunate because I view tournaments now through the eyes of like a business owner as a, and a coach as opposed to a competitor. Um, so it's a lot. It's it was much more it's much more enjoyable when I just had to focus on competing. But um, but tournaments are important, and that's a really good way to to test that. I I would say, <clears throat> man, that's psychology. I, the there's a few things there's a few things i think that are important that it like to kind of just zoom out and expound on on life if you will um that dichotomy leadership that's separate but attached thing that's that's important with anything like in your work i think in your even in your uh you could apply it to your marriage definitely with your <laughs> kids and it, like have you ever had a day just humor me for a second you ever had a day where you're like, dude, nothing is going right. Yeah. Okay. That yeah. and a lot of days. Actually. And if you look at that, and you're like, like a and, lot of days. Okay. <laughs> so which part of that day, right? Well, you know, I, I started at bro. I was gonna throw something through the Big B drive-through window, like literally, like this morning, like and and, and like. It's, bro, what is up it's, with you? And I, like, I, I don't know, it, but yo, Big B, you got to get it together. Like, is like, it? Is it? Big B and Panera. Or Pan- is it more the just Panera, Panera on Eureka. It, 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 freaking tag them like it. I can't believe you're still in business. I uh, like on, honestly. I really don't have problems. It's there. fine I if you're at- 65 and retired and don't have anything else to do that day. For the record, we both eat at the same place. And yeah. I- all right. Well, I, 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 I digress. So you can see my passion right now. So I could easily be like, ah, my whole day's gone. But if you zoom out, yeah, what type of month are you having? Yeah, how's your week going? Yeah, you know, like, and that, and it's easy because if you just focus on the like micro failures and yeah. ignore the macro wins, yeah, that's gonna that's gonna f with your headspace. You know, our operations manager, we were at a leadership uh, training this past weekend, and that's one of the things that uh, she was talking about. Nancy was talking about is you know what you have to zoom out sometimes yeah. and look at what you've accomplished. Yeah, and as a, a athlete as a you know a person what you bring to the table at home at your job sometimes it's a good thing to zoom out and look at the good that you've done and yeah. the good that you've accomplished 100 percent. i do want to add so this is i got like a success story okay actually so th- that's that's when you take time off jujitsu so i didn't train when i was out of town i, I intended to but like the only class was like 5 a.m and i was like it's a hard sell on vacation um it was it, not vacation it was work. It, it was, was a leadership training. Well, but we like right to... before that, I was on vacation. Oh, though. Okay. yeah, right. Yeah, I was. I was in Orlando. Then we went. So I, t- I take business seriously. Yeah, I know. I know. So, so yeah, yeah. I was. I was actually on vacation with the family. So, so then I was still working out. I was still trying, kind of watching what I eat a little. I mean, a little bit. Yeah. Um, bro, I put on eight pounds in six days. Eight pounds. Eight pounds in six days. And like I and I and I I have this game with Amanda. I can look in the mirror, and I can tell her how much I weigh. Like within a pound. Like and like I can look and be like, yeah, I'm probably probably 191, 192. Oh, that's I'm looking. I'm probably 189 today. And then like and then I like I would just felt really heavy, and I was like, man, what's up? So then I I got back in literally, <clears throat> training and jujitsu. And one night of jujitsu, a lot of it's probably water weight, but in one 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 class of jujitsu, I'm down five pounds. You know, and that's just like, I, and that's happened pretty much every time I go out of town or take time off like that. Like, there's nothing like the jujitsu to like it. Just it's a full body. Now my body's sore, obviously, but it's a full body. It's a full body workout, and and you don't realize how hard you're working, and it's the and it's the full thing. So it's just like a success story again. To be like, you can run, you can do this, and, and that stuff's probably healthy. But the jujitsu for a full body cardio workout, in addition to all the mental health stuff, like I'm just every now and then I get a chance to remind myself of it. Like dude, that's that yeah. that's what will happen if I stop training jujitsu. I'm gonna be like the Bro, fat overweight that, guy. That's like free weight loss. Like you know, <clears throat> like there are weight loss uh, facilities in uh, Lincoln Park, Allen Park, Woodhaven uh taylor southgate um uh romulus you know yeah uh, weight loss and you know getting energy in areas near you are um are uh is what jujitsu does 
Yeah. So, so jujitsu definitely, it gives you the ability to lose. I hate to say it like that, but lose weight quick. And it, it, uh, Chad, you know, big Chad is probably watching on here. He's like one of our fans. He's like, yeah, it was a hard sell for my wife. She wasn't sure at first, but then I lost weight. She was cool with it. <laughs> like, like who's, who's wife, go, Chad. Yeah. whose wife is like, you're going to be like, right. like, she's going to be like, I don't know. And then you lose 25 pounds. They're like, okay, all right. That was a good, that was a good call. You know, um, that's, I mean, that's huge, man. So what's the next question? On here? All right. My child has special needs. I don't think he'll be able to train jujitsu. Okay. Stop talking like is that. Is that a member? That's or? a question. That's one I got. I it's come up to me a lot. I po I actually posted that one. Okay. Um <clears throat> stop talking like that. Yeah. Like like I and this this really bothers me. When parents come in, they've never trained jiu-jitsu before at all. Their pay, their kids maybe never done any activity. You know and what? and they're like, "Bro, we got to do a parents podcast. We got to do a podcast for parents." Yeah. Like because well, I'll let you finish, but it just got me thinking about some parenting strategies yeah. that uh, some of our really, really good parents yeah. um, uh, could give some advice on how to yeah. not think like that. Because when you think like that, everybody around you looks at your kid like that. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah that, and that honestly, like that, it it bothers me to the point of almost angers me. So, so you know, Miss Mrs. Smith comes in here and she's like, "Hey, this is little little, little Johnny. Hey, Johnny, what's going on? Yeah, you know." He's nervous. I don't think he's going to be very good at this because he's never done anything like this before. And he's not very athletic and he has a really hard time focusing. And I, I don't really know if this is going to be for him. So we just want to try it out. You know what's probably going to happen with that kid? He's probably not going to be super focused in that class. He's probably not going to pay attention. He's probably not going to feel super coordinated. And he's probably not going to think he's going to do great at it. Yeah. Like you as a parent, like it, you have to – you're leading your child. You as your parent, at, at, you are a leader. You're leading your child. That's literally your job. Yeah. Your job is not just to keep them alive, make sure they're fed. And like, it's to lead them for success and set them up as success in the same way. So like, you need to lead them just like you would anyone else and say, Hey, Scarlett, are you going to crush it today? You are going to, guess what? We're going to go try out this thing called jujitsu. I think you're going to love it. Are you so excited? Absolutely. Yes, I am excited. And I think, I know you've never done something like this before, but you're going to make a bunch of friends and have a great time. Does that sound like something you want to do? Yes. Cool. Follow me. Like I literally, like there's been so many kids that I've coached for two or three weeks, like either in our summer camp or, or jujitsu or whatever. And I had, they were normal kids to me. And then mom's like, yeah, I'm surprised he's doing well being the fact that he's special needs or he's autistic or whatever. And I was like, guess what? I didn't know any of that. And so you like, you take these things, these labels on your kid and you make, you anchor that to their identity and you cripple them indefinitely. Stop doing that. So now that we got that out of the way, my kid's special needs, have them try it out. Have them try it out. That's I, I've lost track of how many special needs kids that we didn't think were going to make it who do amazing. And I'll add this. If they're on the spectrum, they actually tend to get it better. They're highly functional. Yeah. And, you know, um, we uh, uh, we talked to some professionals in the area of uh, ADHD on the spectrum and things like that. And, you know, when we were uh, when we were discussing this, one of the first things they said as some of the most successful people in the on the planet are adhd on the spectrum yeah, and yeah. have all these things so you know they're hyper hyper uh uh sensitive to gathering information processing all information so not that it's you know i kids should be jumping off the walls but you gotta you gotta uh keep in mind that we actually teach kids how to be adhd we teach kids how to be on the spectrum bro i get i would I would love we, to like, like we're giving them a playbook with like, here, here's your iPad yeah, and here's your yeah, phone yeah, and just take yeah. both of them. Yeah. You know, yeah, you, know. you know, he's, he's watching, he's watching video and they, you know, it changes scenes every six seconds. I can't get him to pay attention for a 60 minute class. I wonder why. Yeah. Well, cause who, you're not spending 15 minutes to talk to him. You're like, here, shut up. Yeah. And go, you know, go watch your pad. I'm guilty. of Look, I'm guilty of this as well. Like I'm like, I, it's so easy to like, it's like a magic button. 
<laughs> like it's it's so easy. Look, it's so easy. Oh my god, it's so true. You know, when parents watching, they know that, but um, just know that we are helping program our kids. Yeah. It's it takes a little work, but you know, but we're we've contributed to where our parents yeah. are. We got to take uh, some some sense of uh, accountability yeah. and ownership of, of how where and how our kids are at and the complaints we have about yeah, them. Yeah, and I and I just want to add like I, I just feel the need to add this. I I am not I don't want to be the parent who's who's like, "Oh, my kid doesn't have any screens." So what type of world do you live in? You're wa- you're currently watching this where? Yeah. Not on your newspaper. Right. Like so like I I think and like how many, sorry, I'm sorry, Gen Zers or Gen Xers. But if I have to help guide you to a store and punch it into my Google maps. Cause you don't know how to use your phone. Our screens really that bad, you know? So like I, 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 there's, there's an appropriate balance of knowing how to use technology. Cause that's where the world's going. And it's only going to get more technological. We're not, I don't think we're going to have this like regression. So they're going to need to know how to use that, but they also need to know how to use their motor skills and their social skills and their communication and their, their problem solving and, and their mathematics. And they need that. It's, they need both. Yeah. They need both. So, um, here's something down the next part. I think, uh, I think she'd be good. Uh, she, she'd she'd be good really, advice. she'd be really good. Um, all right. So let's talk about this. You have any other questions? Cause we can talk about the life score here in a second. Um, I think that was really important. Is that in here? It's in the group, members group. I don't know if you have. Do I actually? I, I haven't been checking. Do we have any comments? I should, probably should have been checking the comments. Morning, coaches. Oh, someone's watching. What's up? That's probably like 50 minutes late. Yeah, 9, 17, 20 minutes late. I'm a bad MC. Or, uh, yeah. Okay, so the next question is, uh, what's your life score? This was a, this was a really cool, and it's going to be – it's going to be tough to um, imitate this on a podcast, but I just want you guys to think about something. So life score in general is you look at um, like, if you look at like uh, a credit score is made up of certain, you know, uh, ca- ca- characteristics, you know, there's the payment history, there's your, um, you know, debt to income ratio or whatever a credit score is made up of. Or if you look at like, they uh, a food nutrition facts so much of its carbs so much of its fat so much of its proteins so much of its sugars um you look at uh, a car diagnostics you know there's like uh you know there's there's some there's the makeup right each one of our lives are broken up in generally into different categories and there might be a few but there's there's health mm-hmm. there's business slash work there's your personal life which is directly affecting your business and your slash work. There, there is no separation between the two. I promise you. There's your finances, your financial life, because that affects money's not everything, but it is definitely something we all deal with every day. And, and then there's like your, your hobbies, hobbies or interests. Right. And so those things. And so like, yeah, the exercise we went through is rating each one of those. And then of course there's family, um, you know, your family, marriage, whatever. Um, and where are you at on each of those? And so, so rating each one, and then what's like what's causing success in that area? If it's a high number, what's causing failure in that area? And that that balance, I think, it, is key. So, what were what were some of your takeaways like from from that? Because that like, and I look, I've seen this life. Like, I've seen it's one of those things. You ever heard the phrase? You need to be reminded more often than you need to be instructed. Yeah, like that's that's the truth. Like a lot of these. Uh, these events we go to these these business seminars books I read like it's not I'm gonna, it's not new information. I'm going to answer that question for you for our uh, our uh, our friends and family watching. How often you've been training jujitsu for how how long? Probably uh, I started in April of '09, so what was that twelve? Okay, math. 12, oh, 12 years. Nine, nineteen, twenty, twenty, thirteen years. Okay. About, it's about to be. So it's going about on, to be going on 13 years, you've trained three days a week plus for 13 years. Yeah, you've, on average three. If you take the average, it's three. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I would say more than that because the last three years. Oh, that's three, true. Yeah, that's true. That you, yeah, you the bumped last up three, your average the last three years. That's true. Yeah. So over the last now we're talking about a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt yep. training 12 plus years. Yep. 
uh, the last three years, training five days a week, mm -hmm. competing dozens of times, yep. traveled all over. Yep. So very, very uh, experienced. Um, how often do you get off the mat and say, man, I freaking, I'm no good at jujitsu. Weekly. Yeah, weekly. Weekly. So the same thing has happened at the seminars and the uh, conferences that we just came from, the leadership uh, training that we just got. Um, everybody took a test uh, or rated themselves on all these different categories in their life. Now, we had some uh, friends of ours that are making, you know, uh, um, over a million dollars a year and some of them two, three, four, five hundred thousand dollars a year. And the one common thing throughout that entire room is I would say 90 percent of them gave their self a rating of like 50 to 70 percent. Yeah. Nobody's like I'm 80 to 90. Yeah. I got an 80 to 90. I'm an eight out of 10. If you factor in all my family, People, my finances, yeah. my business, you know, my yeah. health, everybody rated themselves like in the 50 to 70. So their expectation of Half. what. Yeah, Half. what they expect of themselves is so much more than what somebody else expects of them. And I think that is um, uh, you have to expect more in order to get more. Yeah, yeah, that that I think so. That's the thing you rate each category, take the average. Yeah, and that's where you're at. We should we should probably I I, I definitely want to do that exercise for our team, like our yeah. our, our coaches um, do, do it for our for our members, too. But like, I think I think that's huge. And then and then and it's not like a. Oh, woe is me. I suck thing. It's like sweet. I need to pick it up. Yeah. Like, like sweet. I, I like work it's, harder. Yeah. I like I, that and smarter too. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because like that, like one of the things I'll be super transparent here. I have no idea which camera. I, I probably the whole coach Christian coach Christian come around here real quick. No, I want you to come around here. So if you follow any of our YouTube, TikTok, social media, Facebook, Instagram, this is the man that makes it happen. Okay, it's not me. Like, there might be pictures of me or Coach Muhammad or whatever. But Coach Christian is the man that makes it happen. You have actually – I literally – I was in Tampa, Florida. People I've never met before, they're like, dude, you're YouTube. I've, I've seen you on YouTube. Like, they're like, what's up, Dave? I was like, shoot, have I met them before? And then they're like, your YouTube's awesome. And that's because you're crushing it, man. So I just wanted to give, publicly give you a shout-out because people don't see you enough. You're always, like, behind the camera I instead of in front of the camera. But you're doing amazing, bro. Thank you, Christian. And I'll say that to say I had probably been looking at the wrong camera the whole time. Like I've been looking mm -hmm. at this screen. So if I'm sideways, that's it. But um they um I completely lost my train of thought. Oh yeah, the the so it's easy to like be transparent with that is I'm like like an area where I could totally pick it up is with my kids. Like that whole thing of taking your pattern, that was like literally that was me. I was like what my slandin. Bro, the terrible twos hit hard and heavy, and he'll just – it's literally – I'm the car right here. Like, the the Your Welcome song would stop playing because something, and it immediately starts screaming, Wah! and then I turn it back on, and I'm like, dude. So, like, with my kids, though, giving them, them a little bit more attention, um, and what that means, though, is a hard stop time for business. And if you're a business owner, especially a, a jiu-jitsu business owner – that's hard to do. It's really hard to do. Like to turn that off and say, okay, funnel that into like that's that, that it's so hard to do. So hard to do. So that's like one area for me, like just be transparent with you guys. Like, so the exhortation on this podcast is like, take the, take that life score. If you want, I'll get you the, I'll get you the fields and um, we'll show you what they look like. But I think that's huge. We'll take the time, for you guys take the 45 like. minutes, take the 45 minutes to do it. Like it will be the most important 45 minutes of your week. I promise. I promise you. But what's, uh, we got any other questions? Normally we have a bunch. Um, uh, let's see. I think that's it. Hold on. You, I got, think I got one. You, you got one on yours. Otherwise it'll be it. Be a, we'll wrap it up early. While you're pulling that up, they um, I, I just want to like point out, hey coach, what's up, Leah? I love thank you, Leah, for like letting StreamYard know who you are because everyone else I just see Facebook users. So I was like, what's up, Facebook user? 872-301. LFA. Uh, what is we have a question from Tik uh, from TikTok. Do we watch LFA? 
What is LFA? currently Googling LFA? So I think the answer is no. <laughs> like, what is LFA? The Lexus at LFA? Is that it? Nope, that's not it. Um, Legacy Fighting Alliance, American Mixed Martial Arts. So this is actually, this is really funny. Okay. Thanks up, for that question, up, by the way. What's up, Corey? I have watched in my life one UFC fight. What? One. So everyone's like, yo, you catch the card last night? I was like, no, nah, I, didn't, I didn't catch the card last night. One UFC fight. Now, I've seen highlights. They're like, hey, did you? Because here's the thing, man. Again, four hours. It's so long, and it's so late. So it's four hours to catch a 30-second clip, which I'll be able to catch the next day. I mean, and again, I don't do UFC. I don't do yeah. cage fighting. So I thought I, I thought I I didn't know this about you. I was thinking about like I really I really am like like a weirdo, like 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 the how did I become a black? Like, it's, it's not kind of like a fluke. It's like a mistake. I shouldn't talk like that. To correct myself. Never saw any of the karate kid the karate. Never saw any of the karate movies. The only martial arts movie I ever saw, but it was enough to get me in jujitsu. Was never back down. That movie. That's not even a real movie. Gangsta. Excuse me? Yeah, man. Excuse Have uh, you seen Never Back bro, Down? A real movie. It's not, okay. it's not a real movie. It's just got jujitsu in it. Just high so. level acting. Well, then why is the karate kid in there? That's about as high level as you can get. That is the most amateur. Elizabeth acting. Shue. Who's Who? Elizabeth? Elizabeth Shue. Is that one of the actors? She was Allie in the Karate Kid. Not impressed. Okay, At Daniel all. LaRusso, like he played that, he played that. Uh, I think Johnny, that's what he is. Johnny, that's who he is. Like, guarantee you bring that kid up, like the, the dweeb, Daniel LaRusso. He's good at it because he's a dweeb. Even in Cobra Kai, he's a dweeb. No, his role and personality has changed a little bit. And Johnny's like a little bit more likable now. He's more relatable, you know? Yeah, yeah, that, I, wa I wasn't impressed. Well, but that's the only martial arts movie I've seen. Right, like. All right. Well, let me. Let so me. I don't have no idea. I didn't watch. I didn't watch Dragon Ball Z. I didn't watch Naruto. I didn't watch uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I didn't watch any of that okay. stuff. If you decide to watch football, because I know you don't okay. watch football that often, so ever it's boring. I watched one Super Bowl here. Yeah. And it went just like three hours, and it was zero to zero. And and, and you decide to watch any sporting events, the event isn't made up by the actual. Uh, fight or game. It's made up by the announcing and the statistics and the backstories of every athlete. And it's really about the, uh, like the, the, uh, the you know, coaching, time for that. the strategies. Like you want to talk about getting nerded out like us football fans and fight fans. Like we really think about like the, the type of style, the type of training, the type of coach, the background. That's really what makes the watching an event um I, man fun, you know? i it's it's and they're always like late like literally they're like going until they're way past my bedtime like midnight 1 1 a 1 a.m i literally did it once and i was like that's stupid i'm not doing that again like i watch i watch the replays well speaking but, of late i yeah. did uh i did get to sleep early last did night. you good earlier that's definitely. been that's been a problem what time you go to bed 12 o'clock that's that's early. I mean, for, for me, a podcast at nine a.m., that's better than four a.m. Yeah, so. I was up at six, but yeah, yeah, that's that's what's up. So, so yeah, to, I mean, I don't watch the legacy fighting thing. Um, again, I'm not against it, but like, I'm just like, I, I I don't I don't have any input. I won't have any input in that. So. I, I don't know what legacy. What is it? It's like, it's, a, a, it's like another. It's like a it's like a Bellator. It looks like hmm. uh, mixed martial arts promotion podcast broadcast ax tv la so but that's it that's on tiktok i think so that's it guys uh thank you for tuning in for the jiu-jitsu metro jiu-jitsu podcast um these are for those who don't know this is actually going to be put on our blog on our website so you can always read the captions i'm always the captions are always wild man because it doesn't know how to pick up my uh uh, how to pick up my... All right. I have uh, three questions that, uh, that were sent to us. You got three more? Yeah. One, right, one, we got, one we got nine minutes. Nine minutes. Okay. Well, then I can go through them. Okay. Okay. What makes a better pet, cats or dogs? Uh, I, I don't believe... I don't like pets. 
So I, I hit that being said, I have two dogs, but cats are worse. Like if I had to choose one, I'm gonna choose dogs because cats are reincarnate, reincarnate demons. But yeah. okay, would you rather be very uh, tall and lean or short and muscular? If you could pick your body style in jujitsu, I'd rather be tall. Personally, I'd rather be tall and lean. Like man, like the, my 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 long gumpy legs are working out for me with clothes guard. I don't, I honestly don't know what it would be like to be short. Like, okay. like, if I had to, like most people, it's very, very awkward for me to look up to somebody. Like I'm like, like, and, and if I'm looking up to somebody, like they're practically a giant. So, cause I'm six one. And uh, so, but I just walking around a crowd and always looking up to someone would be really, really strange. Um, is, do you like training in the summer? Uh, yes. In air conditioning or in the winter in heat? I try, we try to keep it the same here. I hate, like, it's freezing. Excuse me. No, you don't. I, I, he, no, he, he's an AC junkie. I, it's, it's, I don't want it to. Okay. Like what does my, what, the, hot what does my, what does my, what does my body prefer to train in? Yeah. It's better when it's warm. The joints get moving fluid, but like, no one wants to walk into a stuffy, like, if you've never been in this building. Like it doesn't smell like Rocky Balboa's gym. Like you walk in, it's crisp air. It's like comfortable temperature. It's not sweaty and sticky like a gym. Okay. That being said, I have no problem walking into that gym. Like, uh, oh, I'm not going to name it, but like, the, like other local gyms, right? I have no problem walking into that gym uh, to get a good workout in. Cause I kind of like personally, I, I, I dig that. I'm, I'm there for that. It's just not what I want. Like a jujitsu academy to come in. Cause mom's bringing a little Johnny and it smells like sweat. That's what I mean. Uh, but he's do, you, on my body. do you guys have any friends? No. That <laughs> just... that cuss a lot. That you would say they're actually friends of yours, but that cuss a lot. A lot. I mean, I, I, I get that's a relative term. I mean, I they swear. I, I have... I'm gonna say generally no. I mean, like a lot. A lot you, because I think I think here's the thing they're gonna if you're around someone and you notice that they don't swear a lot you're gonna pick up on that yeah. and you're gonna adjust your behavior. Do you curse? Uh, I yes, yes. I I, mean, I need to cut back on it. I do, I, uh, but I do. I will generally. There's words I do, I de I never take the Lord's name in vain, ever. Like it's actually a sin in Christianity. But like, and then I really. Yo, if you hear me drop the f bomb, like I slipped, and I really don't, I don't throw that word around. But there's other, there's other times, you just gotta get your point across. You know what I mean? And like when someone's trying to do you dirty, like you can't just be like, "That's well, that's poopy." You know what I'm saying? Like there's, like you gotta, that sounds, you just gotta call BS BS sometimes. You know what I mean? So like, I I need to cut back on it, but but I, I'm not gonna sit here and lie. I, I have and lots of it. friends. The, the older my friends get in the time. My my life timeline, I would you, you could almost say the more they curse. <laughs> the newer friends over the last like five, 10, 15 to twenty years, the less they curse. <laughs> you know, but I get it. Sometimes you need a good like you just gotta words words matter. Well, it's not just that words matter. I, I like, get it. Sometimes it's words like you matter. Just wanna, you know, just scream some the curse words. Yeah, you, like it. like listen. Listen, when you got a Karen who's asking to meet the manager and she's she's getting all loud and rambunctious, okay, there's a certain word that defines the way she's acting. And 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 sometimes there's no other word that can describe that. All right, next question. You get what I'm saying? Would you rather be good at sports or good at test taking? Like test. Um, I'm not super great at either be honest like i'm not super great at either i'd rather be i'd rather be good at problem solving yeah so i uh i don't know test taking i i test i like we like when we hired i'd love i'd love to get yo christian you back there i was kind of calling yeah i think he's in the back Hey, come up here real quick. Sorry to make you run. Hey, did uh, I got a question for you. You're going to see where this is going in a second. Hey, did we, did you ever give us a resume? Did you ever send in a resume? No, I don't think I sent in a resume. 
Okay. Like, so, yeah. So, and here's my thing with tests is like, I feel like you can't, man, you can't like, like sum up what a person knows on a piece of paper. Okay, like, I, like, I, w- I would rather be good at, I wouldn't say, I would rather be good as an athlete than uh, good as a test taker because in order to be good as an athlete, you have to prepare. Yeah. You have to study. I get that. I get that. You know, you have to, there's a lot of things that are going into it. So I feel like it's subjective. You know, like if they attempted it, like they made a nice hard attempt. Like you could see the effort was there. In the test? Yeah, in the test. Like yeah. it's just like a resume. Like if you look at the resume, you see like a steady work history. You know, the person's like dependable. If you, you see you, a resume and it's choppy every my, six dude, months. Dude, I don't you have know. a resume, you know but what, bro? it would not look good. I was having this <laughs> conversation with somebody uh, Thursday. Yeah. Thursday, I was having this conversation about. Yeah, yeah, you're good, man. Sorry. Hold on, hold on, yeah, hold on. Yeah. Come here, come here. You're doing such a great job. You do, we, should mean, have, we should have him on, on, our, on our podcast. You have good insight on it. I talked to Coach Christian on his insight a lot. So, yeah, uh, Coach Christian has uh, he's been doing our social media. He's been doing an amazing job, and uh, he's actually an athlete here as well. Um, White belt crew for now. So, yeah, I was having this conversation with somebody, and I hired somebody a few years back at one of my nutrition stores. Yeah. So I call up my wife and I'm like, uh, she's like, okay, how'd the interview go? I'm like, well, um, it went good. I'm going to hire him. She's like, okay, good. Tell me about him. I said, well, he had tattoos down his fingers. He had shaved head. He had a shaved head. Yeah, he's got it's, not, it's not down. coach. It's not coach. No, Christian. it's not coach Kristen. He had a shaved head. He had tattoos going up here. A neck tattoos. All right. That's no, uh, no bullshit. Did he do he, any time? He was in jail for like four to seven years. What did Nancy say? Uh, she's like, I'm sick of you trying to help people. What is your problem? You're always trying to save the world. Listen, man. Listen. Hold on a second. That was probably one of the best employees I've ever had in my That's life. And one of the second best employees I ha- had outside of him, a guy who was in jail for 27 years. Bro, I'm telling you, like, like people change. You can't judge a book by its cover. And I would call and, them outliers, but you're right. Yeah, and um, outliers. Yeah, so that's uh, that's that's my land. Um, that's my thoughts on that. Yeah, the man. Thanks. What are you working on today? What's the, what's the content you're working on for us? Uh, today, like, I'm, I'm not even sure yet. Um, I know we've got another testimonial coming today. Yeah. No, you're 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 time. getting with Coach Sarah, right? You're doing all the uh, yeah, I'm doing all the employee interviews. Yeah, right? the, he's doing the bios, so he's yeah. gonna be doing the bios. Let's make sure I want to use some of this footage with you in it this week because we never see you. So like, if we could get like you, gotcha. yeah, yeah, I definitely want at least two right. days. People need to know who you are. So, all right. Christian, uh, what is uh, what what's right? the highest amount of likes uh, that you've gotten on any of your posts? Any of my posts, uh, working for on any of Metro's posts? Yeah. 22,000 or is it likes, is it no, wait wait start over is it more for yours do you have more that you have a personal post that or yeah that yeah the last week i made like a little video i was literally just messing around and it got that one video got twenty eight thousand views and it has more likes than all of metro's page though just the one video has what? what was the video john stewart talking about our, our capitalist society who's, who's john stewart was it a good capitalist and it was he tearing it down or was he saying it, no it, like like a lot of people had stuff to say like they're debating about it but basically uh, all the video was was him talking about there's a problem you know like people think the world the uh, we're socialists when uh people say we want universal basic income or we want hmm. um universal health care but corporate companies get bailouts like um the bank the, I get that the airline industry, and he's like, "So, are we already a little socialist?" There's a problem. I get, I get that, and yes, yeah, so I just like kind of like clipped that and clipped this other piece nice. and put it together, and a lot of people got interesting. That's that's team. really interesting. You know, uh, more than all of Metro's likes combined. That's gangster. That's what's up. It was, it was interesting. I, I had to I had to shut it out. <laughs> <laughs> well, Keep cool, man. Like, thanks, Coach. You're the man. Thanks, Coach Christian. So, guys, it's 10 o'clock. We want, we want to start on time and in time whenever we can. Uh, Corey DeBoot says, Born a Champion is the best jiu-jitsu movie. Never seen it. So, I'll have to watch it. But, um, all right, you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you on the next podcast.